Welcome back to Nights with Chris Boyle. Joining me now is Dries van Langehove. He's a nationalist activist from Belgium who has recently been sentenced to a year in Belgian jail. What for? Sharing memes. Dries, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this really crazy story. Thank you for having me. So Dries, before we get into this specific prosecution, which you, you've now actually been convicted for, tell us a little bit about your background as an activist in Belgium and how that might differ to an American's experience. We're obviously very used to the ability to speak freely, organize freely, at least, at least <laughs> until the last couple of years. Tell us about what you've experienced there. Well, there are indeed uh, big differences between the activist scene in America and, uh, well, activism and politics in uh, Europe, uh, because there's a lot more freedom in America and there are a lot more grassroots movements, a lot more activism going on in America, whilst in uh, Europe we don't really have a lot of freedom. We don't really have freedom of speech. We have very strict uh, hate speech laws and such, so it's very difficult as an activist. But nevertheless, uh, quite a few years ago, about uh, eight or nine years ago, uh, when I was was still a young student, I founded um, Belgium's most influential and biggest political youth movement called uh, Schild en Vrinden. We rapidly gained a lot of members, uh, about, a, about a thousand uh, activists uh, joined Schild en Vrinden, uh, which is quite a lot for a very small uh, country like uh, like Belgium. And we became very uh, influential, which posed a, uh, a threat because we were nationalists. It posed a threat to the uh, Belgian regime, as I call it, because they are not really a democratic uh, government. They're more like a, a regime, a dictatorship. Uh, and we posed a, a serious threat. Uh, then a few years later, I uh, affiliated with um, Belgium's uh, most upcoming uh, political party called Vlaams Belang, a nationalist party, which is now in the polls, by the way, uh, becoming the biggest party of the country. We are poised to win the upcoming elections in, in June. And the regime saw me and my movement and uh, the political party by which I am affiliated as a big threat. So they are now searching for any means possible uh, to shut us up, to shut us down. And uh, as you can see now, they have found a stick to hit me with. And this stick they found by uh, charging me with hate speech crimes uh, for memes that were posted seven years ago by other people in a private group chat of which I am a part. It, I know it sounds very absurd, but that is the reality in Europe and especially the reality in, uh, in Belgium. Yeah, that, that's kind of crazy. So you were part of a group chat, an old group chat. So if you were to dig into some of the group chats I was in in college, I might be in trouble too, because sometimes people share, you know, what's called spicy memes, memes that are meant to be funny, not meant to be taken seriously. And it seems like that's what happened during the, the course of this investigation, right? They got a hold of basically old, old chats with you and some friends where people shared memes that were taken out of context. And now you're going to jail for that. Tell us a little bit about how they're able to do something that sounds so egregious to American ears. Yes, so for uh, over four years, the state police have conducted a huge investigation that took millions of euros of taxpayers' money to do, and uh, they couldn't really find anything uh, illegal at all on us uh, to shut us down. So then they kind of invented something, and uh, they took memes completely out of context, as you mentioned, and, and labeled those memes as hate speech to try to persecute us. Uh, now, you have to know, as, as you know, obviously, that young people, especially teens, teenagers, which we were back in those days, uh, well, they do share edgy memes. And um, most of the memes that they uh, allegedly found uh, were posted below a thread where uh, one person, one activist out of many activists said, uh, hey, guys, post your most, uh, your edgiest meme, post your edgiest <laughs> meme. So logically, what a lot of young men do, you know how they are, they will go on Google, they will they will search for the most shocking and edgy memes, and they will post these uh, under, under uh, that thread. So they took these memes out of that obviously humoristic uh, context and then they labeled these memes as hate speech and they are now uh, now sending me to jail for a year for those memes uh, even though the judge himself admitted and the media who are very hostile to me also admit that i myself didn't even post these memes i I, I've got to admit, I didn't even see this thread because if I would have seen it, I would have probably said, hey guys, uh, these, these memes might be taken out of context, but I didn't even see it. So now I, I'm, I'm being prosecuted for memes that I, I myself didn't even post or share and I didn't even see them, but they are using this now as a weapon to shut the opposition down effectively.
So I'll, I'll tell you now, I was the president of a college Republicans club back when I was in college. If I lived in Belgium, I'd be in jail. And, and not just for a year. I would probably be in jail for a very, very long time. They would throw away the key. Um, it looks like here in the United States, we've seen, I mean, we've seen it with President Trump of all people. We've seen it really across the spectrum. Do you think what's being done both over there, over here, kind of across the board is using people like yourself to try to scare people out of getting involved? Basically making, making a show of you, making an example of you to try to tell anyone else who would think of getting involved in any populist movement, any nationalist movement. No, if you do, we'll come for you and we'll ruin you. That's exactly what's happening indeed. And, and to get to your, back to your first point, I've spoken to a lot of uh, American activists and even activists or uh, political opinion uh, opinionists uh, that, that see themselves as quite moderate or conservative. And I've told them, and it's true, that uh, for the things that they say online or in their videos or interviews, you would get locked up in Belgium. Uh, you have no idea how harsh these hate speech laws are in Europe, in France, in Germany, in the UK, in Belgium. It's really uh, wicked to be a part of, uh, of all this. Um, but to get back to your point, yes, indeed, they want to make an example out of me. Uh, and it's working quite effectively. What they want to, to show other young uh, aspiring activists or nationalists is that if you get involved in activism, if you try to do politics yourself, so out of just voting once every five years, if you, if you want to do political activism, you will end up like Dries van Langenhoven. So you better shut up. You better uh, uh, put your head between your shoulders as we say in Flanders, you better not say anything um, and then and you won't go to jail. But if you say something, if you do something, you will go to jail. That's, a, that's the effective message that they're sending out to our, uh, to our youth. So that's why my, my uh, struggle is so important because sometimes it gets a little bit much. You have to know that uh, all of the media uh, are, are against me in Belgium. That's about uh, a thousand journalists every day uh, writing the most slanderous uh, lies about me, trying to destroy my life. So it, it gets quite difficult sometimes uh, but I know that if I fall if I really go to jail if I uh, if, if my activism stops then I know that hundreds possibly many thousands of young aspiring activists will become demoralized and demotivated to do something for our people and that is just a loss that we cannot take in, uh, in this pivotal point in the history of our people. I love that. I really like that saying to put your head between your shoulders because that, that truly is what they want. They want everyone sitting there on their phones or in the metaverse with their heads hidden down, not getting involved at all. Um, Dries, I want to ask you a little bit about what's going to come next in your case. We're going to have to take a super quick break, though. Folks at home, you're not going to want to miss this. Sit tight. We'll be back in two. Welcome back to Nights with Chris Boyle. Joining us once again is Dries van Langenhove. He is a national activist from Belgium who has just been sentenced to a year in Belgian jail for sharing memes of all things. Now, Dries, before the break, you were mentioning that it felt like you were basically being targeted as a part of this investigation. You were really trying to be made an example of. Now, to the American mind, when we think of Europe, a lot of people have stereotyped Europe as, you know, I don't know, a very left-wing place full of left-wing movements. Like you said, left-wing authoritarian in a lot of these cases. But in recent years, we've seen a lot of populist, quite frankly, nationalist movements. In Italy, they have Lega. We had Marine Le Pen in France. You've had movements in, in England as well, movements like your own, do you think that the left-wing powers that be, like, like we've talked about, have sort of used you as a scapegoat to, to really scare other people from getting involved? And then moving off of that, what's next in your case? What are you going to do to try to fight this? Do you have any options? Yes, they sure did by uh, targeting me through the media, by targeting me through uh, harassment by police. You have to know that my house has been raided uh, three times by police in three separate occasions, uh, which is, which is, I have to admit, quite uh, traumatizing and quite uh, irritating and frustrating, frankly. Um, but they also target me through the Justice Department, through all of their different means. They are trying to sabotage me and make an example out of me to tell young people not to get involved in activism and to just accept the the autocratic, the dicta dictatorial regime in, in Belgium. So yes, they are uh, making an example out of me. And that is also why they appointed a very uh, left-wing judge. They appointed him in an illegal way to my case. So normally you have to have a, a judge that is selected randomly for your case. They did not do this in my case. They picked out a very left-wing uh, judge who uh, gave me a very harsh sentence because as you said, I am being sent to jail for, uh, for a year, which is uh, in Belgium quite acceptable 
exceptionally. You have to know that uh, only yesterday, a father that uh, beat his own son to death uh, was not given a jail sentence. Um, a pedophile actor two weeks ago who uh, admitted to the rape of more than three children was not given a prison sentence uh, because he supposedly uh, went into therapy. So there's a lot of these cases where very, very um, hardened criminals, pedophiles, rapists do not get a prison sentence in Belgium. That's how our uh, justice department works. But someone like me is, is being given a year in prison for silly memes that other people posted in a private chat group seven years ago. So that's quite crazy in and, in and of itself. But I'm also being given a, a huge fine of 24,000 euros, which is a lot of money. I also have to pay more than 10,000 euros in damages. And what makes this case uh, very exceptional is that they are also giving me the maximum sentence of 10 year loss of um, civilian rights, as we as they say it in, in Belgium, which implicates that I cannot participate in political life for uh, t the coming 10 years. So I cannot get elected. I cannot vote. They are banning me from politics for 10 years because of memes that other people posted seven years ago. That's quite harsh. That's, that's insane. I mean, we complain about China. Here, here in the United States, we're tr trying to ban TikTok because it's connected to China. If you had told me that that was happening anywhere, if you hadn't told me where that was happening and just told me the case and asked me to guess, I would have thought some Eastern, you're, you're a, you're, you know, an autocratic country. I wouldn't have thought a Western country that we consider, you know, relatively modern, relatively humanitarian, right? This is, this is insane. It's egregious to American ears, as I've said before. Tell folks at home how they can get involved in this case. Are you going to try to appeal this? Is that even possible in Belgium? Is there any defense fund that you guys are trying to put together? Yes, I am. Uh, I am very certainly going to appeal this case um, because it's my only chance to stay out of jail. Uh, I am. I am. Uh, I'm a family man. I have two businesses to run. I have grave responsibilities as an activist as well for my people. Uh, getting locked up in jail, losing my political rights for over ten years would be uh, would be horrible, uh, not only for myself but for a lot of uh, other people and for my people um, uh, uh, as well. So yes, we are uh, launching a defense fund. We are going to appeal this. Uh, because this is very important for the future of, uh, of our people. I, uh, I would uh, direct everyone to my uh, profile on X, which uh, Elon Musk has been uh, so friendly as to uh, retweet and so to spread awareness about my case. Also, thank you to uh, Joe Rogan, Eva Vlardingerbroek, and a lot of other um, right-wing and conservative uh, influencers for spreading awareness uh, for my case. Also, thanks to, uh, to your uh, news network. Um, so uh, look me up on X, uh, on at De van Langenhove. On X, there is also our um, uh, Gifts and Go page, our crowdfunding, which is called giftsandgo.com slash So thank you very much for everyone who wants to help us and who wants to help uh, Europe. Dries, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate your time. Best of luck on this case. We're really praying for you. Thank you. And that's all we have for you this evening. Until next time, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at HeyChrisBoyle. If you like the show, please send feedback to chris.boyle at onn.com. I'd like to thank my production team, my director, Jared, my editor, Raphael, PA, Brittany, and all of you at home, thank you, and enjoy the rest of your night.